not going to hurt each other tonight. No. Well, <laughs> tell us what you are going to do, because I do have to let you get to the Okay, well, what we're going to be doing, we're going to be doing uh, five forms with, uh, with, the, with the Joe. Uh, it's uh, basically uh, defense from a, a samurai sword. Uh, it, was, it was developed uh, basically to uh, defend against a sword. And it uh, originally, they, uh, it was started by this man, uh, Muso Gonosuke, who, uh, who originally carried a six-foot staff. And uh, he fought this famous uh, samurai named Musashi and was defeated by him. And it really uh, bothered him immensely. So he, he went off and did some meditating. And uh, he was uh, visited by a, a Tengu, which is basically uh, kind of like a, a a goblin in, in Japan, a long-nosed goblin. They, sometimes they have uh, the wings of crows. Anyway, he was, he was visited by this, and he told, I was told that he should uh, slice off two feet of the, of the six-foot staff, and it would give him more dexterity and uh -huh. be able to move fast. That's the four-foot one you just showed yes. me. You, but you have a six-foot one. Yeah, well, I, just, I just brought that to show the, to show. the difference <laughs> in that. It's, uh, the uh, the six-foot one actually gives you gives you a, a lot a lot more distance. It's a lot it's a lot uh, safer. It keeps the the swordsman at bay, but it's it's also very cumbersome and hard to shift from from the this position and make it into an attacking form. Okay. So you're going to demonstrate with these tonight, with the short ones, I presume? Yes, so we're going to be, going to be using the, the drill. It's, the it's, 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 it's much more versatile. Okay, it? now you have some protective gear. Do you need to put that on before you demonstrate? No, no, that's, that's actually for, later. for Kendall. Okay. If we have time for Then we'll, we'll talk about that later. Oh, what's this? And the, this is the, um, um, what we're going to show, uh, the, the judo forms are all uh, how one would use the joe, the staff against the swordsman based on the historical context that, that Gordon just explained. And so I'm going to act in the role of the swordsman and um, Gordon is going to wield the, the joe. And um, this is a unique form in that the, uh, the swordsman always loses be because the, that was the, the theory behind the meeting between Muso Konosuke and, and Musashi. Mm -hmm. And um, w what's unique about this is that, uh, and, and one of the things that I particularly uh, enjoy about Jodo is that even though my main focus is on kendo, is that it gives me insight, uh, it gives the practitioner insight into the weaknesses. The weaknesses of a weapon that is grasped only by one end, because you can't, you can't grasp right. it here, because this theoretically would be a, a blade and would cut you. So uh, the Joe gives uh, an insight into uh, the limitations of this weapon. Okay, so you're the, you've got the fake wooden sword, the wooden sword, okay, yeah, yeah. so we, we won't hurt anybody. And if you gentlemen just let your mic, take your microphone okay. oh, off sure. and go over to the uh, demonstrating corner and we'll save this for when you're done and come back. Just put on the chair, I'll be fine, Gordon. And uh, I'll let you go get set up and again remind our viewers that we're um, speaking with Daniel Boot and Gordon Fisher who are going to demonstrate uh, some interesting uh, forms of combat, if you will, for us tonight. And um, I just always marvel. I had them talk a little bit about the uh, the dress, if you will, that they're wearing. I believe uh, they call the divided skirt. Seems to me this would be really hard to maneuver in, but it's not, as you will see, as they make the demonstration for us. Are you ready over there, Gordon? Sure. All right, here we go.
that would be the end of the first demonstration, Gordon? Yes. Okay. Um, you, you guys can kind of stay over there because you have more to show us, right? Well, we're going to actually, I was going to have, I was going to have uh, Daniel, I was going to explain what Daniel would do when he uh, put his Kendall gear on. Okay, but before we do that, let me ask a few, a few questions about what you just did. Sure. Daniel, what were you saying in Japanese? I was saying the names of the different techniques. Oh, okay. Yeah. So the, the first one, uh, excuse me, basically just means uh, stick, uh, standing, reaching, reaching stick. Mm. Um, the second one, that was the one where, where Gordon had the, the, the staff just planted in, in the ground as if it was waiting for someone to have come in. Mm. And um, the second one, uh, Suigetsu, Suigetsu is the Japanese word for the uh, solar plexus. And the reason for the name of that technique is because uh, in his response to my, my first, my strike, he uh, uh, does thrust to my solar plexus. Okay. And then um, the next one, shaman, shaman just means, uh, shaman means like a geographical feature, like it means slant or diagonal. And the reason is because he, uh, the strike that he executes is kind of coming from a diagonal. And um, Sakan, the fifth one, which is a unique technique, because he does a motion which is derived from the use of a halberd, curved spear. Um, Sakan means actually uh, penetrating on the left-hand side. But uh, this is an interesting technique because the first motion where he does this mm -hmm. represents, if we imagine that this, this were a spear, and this is the blade, and, and, and it's just a shaft all the way down, it represents receiving and absorbing the energy of a strike with, with, the, with the, not the pointing end, but with the uh, shaft end of a spear. Mm. And receiving the energy turning it around and, and, and changing the hand position and then cutting down using the blade. So that, that's, a, to me, that's one of the things that's interesting about that. Uh, the, the spear that I refer to is, uh, in Japanese is called a naginata. Mm -hmm. And then kasumi, the seventh technique. Um, kasumi means mist. And I believe the reason why it's called, uh, I haven't studied this thoroughly, but I believe it's called mist because the way Gordon's hand is shielding his eyes is, is almost um, creating an element of, uh, uh, and some people say it's a sunshade, but I, I think the idea might be that you're, you're blocking your own vision as if peering at the opponent through mist or something. And um, this one is uh, one of my favorites because it contains a lot of different motions. Mm -hmm. So each of the techniques you just went through, are they, they are choreographed, more yes. or less? Yes. Okay. It's kata. Kata means formal technique. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's, a, it's a encyclopedia of self-defense techniques that, uh, that a teacher can hand down to his student. There are actually uh, 12 uh, in, the, in the syllabus uh, that were adopted by the uh, Japanese Kendo Federation. Although the, the mother art uh, of uh, Shindo Musoru has uh, 64. Okay, but with with what you were doing, do each of you know what the other one, what to expect oh, yes, from yes. the other one? It's, it's choreographed. Don't, we know exactly never what improvise. They, that way there, that way there, uh, we we try not to to hurt one another. I I, I caught Daniel, Daniel's uh, fingers a couple of times there, but uh, we basically we try not to. What what he does is he he when he cuts. I try and catch between his two hands so that I don't I don't actually okay. cap actually hit him. The uh, the blade uh, of a real sword would would cut into the the staff. So what you try to do is bring your staff up between the hands on the handle, mm -hmm. and that way there you can control the sword or hit it on the t on the back side of the sword. Uh, so to deflect it away so that you can attack. Okay. All right, now that you get set up for what you're going to do next, this is where the armor comes in? Yes. Okay. Yeah.